to Eli or Ella in Wisconsin. Thanks for holding. Hello. Hi. Hi. Welcome. Okay. I'm having like the worst problem in my entire life. I'm sorry. I'm trying not to be dramatic and I'm trying not to cry in front of my son. So give me a second to hide. Um, CPS tried to take my kid today because he has a scar on his face. He has this issue where he's like hyper. So he jumps all over the place, whatever. It's not a big deal. But the day that, you know, he just happened to hit like the pan that was in my hand and had water in it and it was hot and it got in his face. So he's got a scar. This is like three weeks ago. Today I get a freaking phone call from CPS saying to me that they're going to take my child and, you know, just for questioning or whatever, and just to take him out of custody for me. And I'm like, why? Because of the scar. And it's part of protocol. And I said, no, it's not part of protocol. First off, you're supposed to ask him what's me present. I'm sorry. I'm trying to breathe. I'm kind of mad. No, no, they are criminals. They are monsters. They are dangerous. They are evil. Uh, but uh, look, look. I'll obviously have to continue into expanded overdrive with you. And we should have a database of this because I, I, there are the groups that help advise people how to defend themselves from the CPS. Number one, they'll try to trick you to sign forms. They'll threaten to take your kid unless you sign forms. Then when you sign the forms, you waive your rights. You know, this is the thing. Your kid falls off a jungle gym. They shouldn't have, they say. Normal things. Kids burning themselves on the stove. Normal stuff is their excuse to try to break up the family and take your kid. Uh, now, they have the doctor where you took your kid to the hospital, spying on you and reporting. You know, my dad's a physician, but when I dislocated my shoulder, chicken fighting at a pool when I was like 10 years old, you know, that's where you stand on somebody's shoulders and, and wrestle. My dad said, listen, they're going to ask you at the hospital what happened, and uh, if you get this wrong, they're going to try to take you. And sure enough, they did when we got there. They don't care. Uh, but, ma'am, I understand you're really freaked out. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to come back to you in overdrive and hear what you have to say. Uh, but number one, don't get panicked. That feeds the vampires. They, they, are, they want that job to extract the horror and the pain. Don't worry. They're cursed to hell. Child kidnappers are cursed to hell. Not just hell when they die, hell on earth. Okay, so we're going we're gonna to talk about this when we come back. We'll be right back. You're five times more likely to be abused in CPS country than you are. Ellie is calling us. Uh, we're into extended overdrive because we've got to talk to her. The problem is whenever we start taking these calls, then countless people call. And I'm not a vampire, psychic vampire. So the sounds of anguish and pain and frustration is like pure torture. But if you go to a vampire event with the... I've been to a lot of these family courts when I used to really fight this here locally back when I was just on local radio and on Access TV. And the, the special, they have special cops assigned to it, special CPS, special judges. You're, it's like little fat Nelly weirdos and, and little pot belly pedophile types and always pretty much female judges with butch haircuts who usually have a whole string of kids they've taken from people uh, themselves. Again, I don't, I'm going to say this, it's, I don't even dislike gay people or hate them. It's that I've been to these events, and a lot of times it's the specialized homosexuals who are then collecting everybody's kids and, and that run this. And I, so then it's like they're persecuting us, and I'm tired of it. I mean, I've seen it here in Austin uh, where you'll see, you know, the you know, law enforcement people with their wife. Uh, you know, they're both women, and then they got a string of little kids they took. And uh, I don't, I don't, I'm just going to be honest about this because the kids come first, Okay. And of all the, the you know, that uh, homosexual lobby attacks me, I don't care. Just go right ahead. Uh, and, and, and it's other groups, the big orphanage groups and DynCorp is the biggest contractor nationwide running the child grabbing. Um, now, if you, and I'm not trying to freak this lady out. I want everybody to know the danger out there. Groups that fight CPS. I personally, you know, have had my kids jump around, jump into things. We all know they do. Um uh, Thank God my, my son this weekend did it uh, into something that broke and it didn't hurt him. He jumped into a lamp and it broke and was glass all around. And, but, but, but see, I know, I know wealthy people whose daughter falls off a jungle gym and breaks their hand. One case broke uh, was a boy's thumb. CPS comes and tries to take him. Or says, well, just go to parenting classes and pay us money and get, like, get, on, get into probation with them so the vampires can have entry and kind of run a database of your kids and see you know, if some Saudi Arabian or something wants your kid. I'm not, I'm not kidding. Uh, these are criminals, and, and, and they're, some of them were abused, so they think everybody's an abuser and they're going to punish parents. 
their 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 training in school in in college. I've shown the textbook says the family is evil, uh, needs to be gotten rid of. Others, uh, some of them are actually well-meaning, but that's why CPS has about a 56%. You pull this up, pull up more than 50% turnover in CPS workers because the good people get in thinking they're going to help kids. And Like they had CPS workers in New York go public about how they grab kids for medical experiments. So the point is you can't have an evil government protect kids in these family courts because they're eugenics courts. They're not real courts. If somebody's beating their kid with a baseball bat, that's assault with a deadly weapon. The cops are involved. The neighbors see it. The cops come. You go to jail. But see, now it's moved into a thing of, you know, you're sitting there on the stove. Your kid jumps into you. A little bit of thing gets on. There's a little bit of a whatever. And then they come and try to take your kid. But I've seen far worse stuff. You need to know when you go to the, to, to, to the doctor. When you go, they're spying on you. And if you just type in groups that fight CPS... There's a lot of great tidbits. I'm going to go to her in a minute. I'm kind of procrastinating because of the sound of her crying really does not. I start feeling like crying, getting upset. And also I start having things flash through my mind with these CPS people that isn't good. So I'm just not going to, you know, women and children in distress gets me really going the wrong. You know, I just can't handle it anymore. We're going to take the country back, though. i take it back and handle it that way. Now. We can do a lot more good getting the word out right now, okay? I get these people, don't worry. Now, continuing here, you can get familyrights.us, how to fight the CPS. Just type in how to fight the CPS or groups that fight the CPS. You'll get a lot of good groups out there, like Family Rights. There's some Homeschool Defense League people I've had on that have the best info. There's CaliforniaHomeschool.net. They'll usually have it for your state. You're up in Wisconsin, a very wicked Nelly command base. Uh, up there. Um, now, I'm going to go to you, ma'am. I'm going to go to you, Ellie. Uh, you, you've got the floor. Don't cry. Just try not to. Tell us about your case, where you are. There's there's groups that fight this, mainly victims out there. There's lawyers that fight it. They're going to hear you, and you can give out an email or something for folks. Uh, now, 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 tell us what happened. Go ahead. Okay. Um, so, I'm sorry. Um, so, basically, what happened was, is I've as soon as she says that, I said to her, I was like, so help me if you take my child. So start the whole story. Start, hold on. Now listen, you don't want to talk to the vampires before you get a lawyer. You don't want to get one of the local lawyers that will just suck money out of you and hand the kid over. You're going to have to settle down or they're going to win. The wolves want to get you off in a corner and have their way. And even if you were, quote, an abuser, which you're probably not, they're five times more likely to hurt your kids. So... The law of averages, just get rid of the Department of Education, Department of Health and Human Services that has bounties in the, the, the health departments. They're all criminal groups set up 100 years ago for eugenics. Start the whole story. Go ahead. Okay. So, like I said, like, my son, he got, like, a scar on his face from, like, obviously a water burn or whatever. And, you know, I remember my son coming back to me after, you know, school that day, the day after he had that happen, and he tells me that the nurse is asking him a bunch of questions, and I'm like, well, what did you tell her? He was like, well, I told her I just didn't want to talk about it. And I'm like, Josh, you need to not do that. You need to, you need to tell them if something happened, even if it wasn't um, on purpose, if mommy didn't hurt you on purpose, you still have to let them know. And he's like, okay. And then I'm like, so if they ask you... All right, so the government training camp's got a quota. The teachers sent them to the Soviet nurse, the injector lady, the vaccine pusher, the, the Redland pusher, uh, because that's what they do in the schools now. I mean, I was like a school student aide as a senior because I had finished my finished my courses. Uh, and uh, she called me in and first kind of asked me if I wanted to date her when I got out of high school. She was a middle-aged blonde. And then she asked if I like Ritalin. She said, it's like speed. It's a really great drug. And I said, no, I run six miles a day, lady. I mean, look at me. Uh, and back then, I looked like four or something, not like what I look like today. And uh, uh, so, I mean, certainly. So so, the, so the school pusher was there. Uh, and uh, how old's your son? He's only six. He just um, started the first time. That's grade. not good. The younger, when they're older, you can have parents running chainsaws on them, and they don't care. It's the young ones, but he's still not really little. So that's a good thing there. They'll probably just want to get some classes and suck some money out of you. He's not blonde hair, blue-eyed, is he? Well, that's their favorites. Yeah, they got, they got, they got pervs. They like. And I'm not trying to scare you. You just need to know that they there is a market now. Now, now, ma'am, start over there. So, 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 what happened then? So, the Nelly creature is a female or a male? Uh, the CPS person called you. And it's, it's it's a female. The way she was talking to me over the phone is really, you know, 
kind of aggressive or whatever. No, she was, she was wanting to freak you out. Well, she was wanting to get some psychic blood. So the vampire called. What happened? So um, I like imme I told her, you know, if she did anything, like take him out of that school, she's going to regret it. I was going to, you know, sue her or something. So I drove up to the school as fast as I could to get him out of the classroom, and I did. And I freaked out the teacher, and I tried not to get emotional, but I don't know. So I well, I understand they've broken down the economy, and you probably don't know if you have much money. I don't know if you're a single mother, but uh, they like to have it where you're isolated and got to put them in a camp. It's the government training camp. Your child would be better with no education than going to a government death camp. Now, where they drink the fluoride and everything else, they have the drills. So you freak the teacher out. She came in crying. It's normal when you know a predatory group is coming for you. This show is here to reinstill normal instincts in people. But the, so, 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 the, so, the, so the teacher, please continue. I said to her, I was like, I'm not going to keep my kid in here any longer. I'm taking him out, and I'm not going to allow you guys to literally go behind my back and try to kidnap him, you, you know, via the CPS. And the teacher was like, well, it's not my problem. You should have, you know, you should have, um, I can't even remember what she yeah, said. Yeah, just following before. orders, guaranteed she or he is the person that sent him to the drug pusher. Yeah, and then, like, as soon as I come out of the classroom with my son, so help me. I look at this, and here is, like, to the side of me is, like, the CPS worker. It's this, like, big bovine woman. She says to me, she she tries to grab from, she actually grabs for my son, and I pull her away, and I'm like, if you touch my son again, I promise you you're going to regret it. Are you the one that I spoke to over the phone? She's like, yeah. And then she was like, will you let me talk? I was like, no. You tried to grab for my son. You lost that, um, you lost the chance to talk. Oh, wait, she did? Hold on, son. hold on. You've confirmed they did try to go snatch him. Yeah, he literally, she, like, I got there seconds before she got there. Well, listen, listen, if you got, let, let me tell you, if you got family in another state before they trump up more stuff, you move to the other state and you just withdraw your child out of their system and they'll move on to other kids to kidnap. Do you have family in another state? I mean, I do, but I can't really leave because right now I'm pregnant and my boyfriend is like forced to stay here. Yeah, but ma'am, 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 ma'am. Listen, number one, you need to get married. Number one, he needs to work, however, move and get five jobs if he has to. But I'm not going to sit there and give you advice, actually. You do what you want. I'm telling you what I would do. We're going to skip this break and then just go to the 30 and end this transmission. Listen, ma'am, I want to help you. Tell me, tell, me where the, tell me where the vampire is now. So she's saying, listen to me, listen to me. Well, this is what happened. I got a phone call from my dad, like, probably t um, 10 minutes before, like, I got um, on line with, or on the phone with you. And he says to me, and he's like, well, I've, the police and the CPS lady are here. And I was telling him what happened. Because in between, by the way, she called me the B word because um, I, you know. Yeah, well, I, you should record. Let, let me stop dad. you. So your children at your dad's house? No, no, he not any, no. I was actually going to go there. but Well, then why were they at his house? Right why were they at his house? Huh? Why were they at oh, his house? I addressed it. Oh, because I live there and my address is still live, um, is still at my dad's. That's like, good. They, See, that's why when you call to get a pizza, they mark down with your name and credit card where you're really at. They use that as their real database of where you're at. So you hadn't ordered a pizza uh, lately, so they, they uh, obviously didn't have your so So are they coming to get you right now? This is what he says to me. He was like, well, they need to, um, my dad tells me, he was like, well, they want to find out how to meet with you because, you're, you know, he was like, because whatever happened, they're trying to figure out about, you know, the scar in his face and whatever. He was like, whatever happened at the school. When you say scar, has he just got a red whelp on his face? Huh? Has he got a red whelp on his face? No, no. He just has like a, it looks like a, like it literally, you could tell it, used, it was like a burn from water. But what does it's it look like? A, is it a scab? Oh, what is it? Like discolored. Yeah, it's a little red it's spot. Like a it's like a red spot. Huh? It's a red spot. Yeah, well, it was a red spot. Now it's healed up. Yeah, well, well let's just stop right there. Um, again, we had a, uh, neighbors over um, a few months ago, and they invited a friend over. And my son's got a birthmark. And it's and liberals, so-called liberals are the worst. My son's got a birthmark on the side of his head. And uh, they always walk over and ignore the parent. Because, again, they'll also criticize you for having kids. And uh, it was a UT professor. And she said, oh, what happened to your face? And he said, it's my birthmark. And then she kept, she goes, is it really? And she was kind of looking at me. And I went, yeah, it's a birthmark. And she's like, oh, it was, it's their little power. It's their little goodie. It's their little evil. And they like to walk to my wife in Whole Foods and say, you got three kids. Again, it's all about hatred of America, hatred of families, hatred of decency. They're rotten filth. 
And uh, again, it's all about you're bad. And it, it, it's this servile, and they love it. They, the hippies, you know, have been turning these little Nazis, and they love their bisphenol A and their breast cancer, and they love their evil. They sacrament it. They love being conned. They love families are bad, men are bad, guys with redneck voices are even worse. I'm an unholy demon, you see, because I actually have freedom and I have guns and, and I have strength and I'm an evil sacrament to the feminist goblin. Okay, and, 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 and so I understand. So, so literally, so, so how did this happen? He, he, he bumped into you or something and got a little bit of water on him. I mean, what happened? Well, like, I was boiling water for, like, eggs, because I always boil my water first. And, like, I figured I didn't want to do the egg thing, so I started getting sick. So what happened was I got ready to take the water and dump it in the sink. My son comes flying into the living room. No, I know, I know, yeah. Room. Now, they get a lot so, of kids with stove accidents. You know, that's why we don't even let them in the kitchen and keep the stuff on the back burners. Okay, so he bumped into it, no big deal. I would, I would get a hold of a family lawyer. And I would just call the police themselves and say, you're not, you know, I know they were coming to grab my kid and it's a normal response. I know you have quotas and say, I've contacted national radio, the Alex Jones show. I would take photos of it and I would call a family, uh, uh, family lawyer, you know, you know, like, uh, and, and I would check reviews of it. So are they coming to your house right now? Well, this is what, that's what my, what I was trying to tell, say, like, my dad gave me the phone number to one of the police officers, and because my dad is kind of weird in this way, he says to me, he was like, well, he's a brother, so, as in he's black, so, you know, you don't have to worry about, you know, you know, anything happening over the phone, so just call him so he doesn't send the warrant out on you, and I'm thinking in the back of my mind, it doesn't matter if he's black or white, he's still going to screw me over, he's working for another, you know, he's working for the lower hand, it's like. Oh, so, so, so your dad is, is, is black? Yeah, I'm I'm black, and my dad's black. I mean, like my child's biracial. No, I understand. They really like to get black kids. Yeah, no, no, black, black, black government enforcers feed on blacks. It's it's like it's their cop black cops kill blacks for no reason all the time. It's like a like they prove they you know that they're in the system by doing that. Now this might be a nice guy too. There's some black cops that understand. There's some cops period that understand what's going on and have seen been around these CPS schools enough. Well. I think you should settle down. Obviously, you're right to come and get your son. I think the fact that you rebuked the teacher, but I understand getting emotional, makes them want to prove something. Uh, I would. I don't think it hurts to call the cop and say, listen, I just know they were coming to get my son. It was no big deal. He, he didn't even scar him. I wouldn't even call it a scar. You know, it, it's a red welt because he bumped into you. And uh, say, I don't want to meet with you guys someplace where you grab my son. Uh, you, you know, Say, I need to get a hold of re representation. And then I'll be happy to meet with you guys once I have a lawyer and just l let him know that's fine. And then I would I would go check into a hotel for a couple days. Just so you don't have to worry about the stress, worry about any of it. Tell him your son's out because of emotional distress of them trying to grab him and say you're just getting your lawyer. And I would spend a lot of time reading on the websites and reading, you know, the different ways to handle them. Because I and then and then make a decision on what you're going uh, to do yourself. But I would type into the search engine here. You know, basically, uh, how to fight the CPS. And I would go and look at different ideas and see what you would do. I personally just would have been cold with them. I understand getting emotional and said, oh, it's no big deal. Yeah, he bumped into me. And then when the snake called, I'd, I'd say, well, it's a little bit of red whelp. I mean, uh, you know, um, and then say, oh, OK, well, uh, I need to get a lawyer then. And, you know, I need to get you know some advice on that. And great. Uh, and, and then say, I'm like, well, I'll put him back at school, but I don't want you grabbing him to get some verbal thing. Now, the, now they'll lie and just, it's not good. It, it's better than groveling because there's so many people that'll grovel. They can steal the kids and get cash bonuses. They'll move on. So it's really bad to grovel. It's secondarily bad to really get hysterical because they'll feed off that too and, and, and get upset. It's best to be very cold with them. Okay. And just be like, listen to me. That's the way to talk to them, okay, and say, I know you got quotas. I know you're, you know, a criminal organization. It's good to let them know, hey, I know you're a crook. And, and, and uh, you know, they're telling them you're going to sue them. That's always a nice thing because, see, they don't want to go after a water buffalo. Lions will only go after water buffalo if they're starving because water buffalo will kill them sometimes. They're powerful. They want to go after a little ding-ding or a little uh, gazelle, Uh they want to go after something little and juicy. And so uh, 
I would go ahead and call the cop. And, I mean, does your dad not know where you live? Oh, no, my dad knows where I live. He's just not going to tell them. He's not that type of person. Well, that's good. Well, well, listen, listen, listen. Listen, I'm not going to give you advice. I would, A, pull out a Dodge. I would, B, call that cop, and I'd call the CPS lady and say, look, you may be a nice person. I just hear about the horror stories with you guys. I want to work this out. You called me a bitch. You're sorry for that, even if she's not. Say, you're sorry for that. I'm sorry for getting upset. Let's work this out. Because she may not be a ghoul. Probably is. But still, even if they're a ghoul... They'll tend to back off, okay, because you got your hackles up. They want to move on to easier easier quarry. They don't want to rob a house that's got the lights on. They know they know you got the lights on now, okay, and you just let them know uh, that, uh, that um, you know, uh, if they send you a signed thing that you can take them to a third-party, uh, you know, doctor. I, I, oh, yeah, that's what my dad would tell me to do. Go to a local physician yourself and say, I wanted to get this checked out. Because uh, my son a few days ago spilt water on it, and the school was asking about it, and 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 uh, I would like to, uh, you know, you know, uh, you know, get your take on it, and, and then you can quote that doctor or whatever, and then if you feel calm, say, well, CPS was calling the school wanting to have him examined. Will, will you give me a report on it? Just act calm, get that done, and, and 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 then regardless, you've got that, and then you can go. So I would go to a doctor A. You have a physician that's examined him and say a physician has examined him. There's no problem. That's always a nice little giblet because they can claim the the, you know, the child's in imminent danger and, and, and get a confiscation order. And then I would contact the police officer and I'd and say, well, I need time to get a lawyer. And then and then and then you can meet maybe at the law firm or something. How does that sound? That sounds more realistic than what I was going to do. Yeah. Um, well, I mean, that's what I've done with my, I mean. Uh, he had gym class, one of my, uh, secretaries, one of my customer service people, her daughter, I saw it, had a little bitty, uh, little bitty, sc uh, uh, bruise, been, been around for years, really sweet little girl, really nice, you know, a mom and dad, uh, you know, come to the company parties and stuff. And they got big quotas down in the county south of Austin, uh, cause we're here in south Austin, so, so they live in Hayes County and they tried to, uh, they tried to, CPS couldn't get there that day, but then they were calling saying, meet us, meet us. And I told her, drive by. And sure enough, they had the cops hiding. They were going to try to grab her. So we went public on air, made a big deal out of it, made the newspaper. And then we ended up, I ended up having um, them meet at my lawyer's law firm. I think I think I paid for it. I don't remember. The point is, uh, yeah, I think I did. A couple thousand. Because it was a bunch of stuff going on. And then they met at the lawyer. And the lawyer said, go get the doctor note and all this. And I'm, I'm talking about a little bitty bruise. I mean, my kids have bruises on their knees, you name it. They're running around the woods. This is illegal now in America. Now, once they get your kid and hand them over, best case scenario, to a mill where they just warehouse them, feed them two or three hot dogs a day and collect money. And, you know, you, usually they're drug heads. I clean carpets for a, a summer. That's why I'm I, potheads send me emails going, don't say it's potheads. Okay, well, I'd go to houses and there'd be like 10 kids in them. Living on dirty mattresses, e eating eating fast food if they were lucky that looked disheveled and skinny. There'd be some waddling pothead wandering around who was the foster parent with wafting marijuana smoke. And because of that, kids can drown in pools. They don't get in trouble they, because it's the state and they're protecting themselves. That's a best case scenario. But, you know, the good news is even if they tried to say you were bad, you could probably get the child put with your parents. But some parents are lazy and don't want to take the kids. You're going to be all right. Okay? So uh, you do what you think is best. And and uh, do you want to give people your email? Yeah, my email. Um, it's, it's Paviel, my full name. It's P as in Paul, A as in Apple, V as in Victor, I-E-L-L-E, -L -L -E, underscore, Henderson, H-E-N-D-E-R-S-O-N, at yahoo.com. That if anyone has any information out there as far as, like, CPS, like, fixing this. Victim Hold on. No, you ain't seen nothing yet. That poor lady, Ellie, in Wisconsin, thought I was saying bye and hung up. I'm not going to give her personal advice because I don't know her situation, but I would get out of the house. I'd call that police officer and say, I'm taking my child to a doctor. And after they've been seen by the doctor, I'll tell you the doctor place and where it was and fax them the report and say, you can call the doctor's office, go talk to them. The child's fine. Because then it can be ascertained that there's not an imminent danger and the child's head wasn't chopped off or something. Um, 
I understand your fear once you found this out with the school. I would have just gone to the school, and I'm not saying you're bad. I understand getting emotional, believe me. Going and just saying, hey, something came up, family deal, checking them out. Thank you. And then not answering the phone when they called you, and then just calling them back after they closed and saying, you know, uh, a lot of times they make them sleep there in their offices, the little kids and everything. It's pretty, don't even feed them. These people are sick. They're going to abuse kids all day, and that's okay. And then call them and say, oh, yeah, I went to this doctor. Here's the info. And uh, deal with it that way. Now, if you keep your kid out four or five days, they'll try to trigger a truancy. Um, but you can also just withdraw them from school. There's a form to do that. Uh, now, the problem is you're pregnant. And sometimes they like to grab one child and then grab the next one. And they got a big, they can get a half million bucks for a blonde-haired, blue-eyed kid or black Raven hair with blue or green eyes, look out. It's come out in the news. They have databases for those. And they've got operatives in schools, you name it, hunting raven-haired children with blue eyes, you're in trouble. Green, they'll stop at nothing. The elites will pay millions for one of those through the adoption agencies. They are hunted, hunted. Black hair, green eyes. I guess they call that a Cajun queen. I had a girlfriend look like that once. The point is they will come after you, Okay. And believe me, I've studied this, I've looked at it, I've seen the dark side. I've opened a door when the lady called the hospital, they were trying to take their kids, I already knew about their case, and the cop was choking the woman to sign the document, grabbing her by the throat, by the back of the neck. And, I, and, I, and, the, guy, and the cop looked up and I saw that big, fat, evil, uh, I can't even handle it anymore. I'm having flashbacks. There's nothing worse than having a pedophile look at you with that with, with a badge and a gun i mean you're just like my god i want to you want to vomit i mean it is tyranny incarnate it is tyranny incarnate and you just see it and the evil and they know you see it and they know they're going to go on and on and have their way they just know the world's one big wonderful place because the american people bow down to their corruption bow down to their evil bow down to their fake authority and the monkey suits and the crowns the government people wear with all their festooned garbage. And hell has been released upon this country. But it's all coming out. The government ships the drugs in and the guns out. They ship them to the drug gangs around the country and they leave the drug gangs alone that rob your house and your car. And the cops get paid cuts of it in most cities. And then when they pull you over a family man and you've had one beer, you go to jail. Or they catch your kid with marijuana and they go to jail and learn how to be real criminals. It's all master planned out. I got to end this right now. I got to start intensely getting ready for 7 o'clock tonight, InfoWars Nightly News. If you want to put a stop to this, you go after the head of the snake. That's the private Federal Reserve. That's the hijackers. That's the enemy. A peaceful demonstration to identify them as the enemy, not capitalism. They want an end free market to take all of our wealth and pay it to themselves in austerity measures. I'm going to shoot a video today that goes up on the website. We got press releases out about it. Occupy the Federal Reserve Movement announced and launched. Get our articles at InfoWars.com. Get it out to everybody you know. Spread the word about the transmission. It is 1776 worldwide. We don't have a choice but to, re to, to, to resist tyranny or let it fully eat our guts. I'll see you tonight, 7 o'clock, Lord willing, and back live tomorrow, 11 a.m. Central. I am Alex Jones. This is the InfoWar. I hate you, evil. I hate you. Tyranny.